And now we have Sister Masuma joining us um, to talk about sacrifice and compromise. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Masuma. Wa alaikum salam. How are you? Alhamdulillah, thank you. Good. Um, so we have a question from um, a viewer, um, anonymous in the UK. So if I read it out and then perhaps mm -hmm. we can um, go into um, responding to the question. So it says, Dear Masuma, I barely feel a connection religiously. I feel it maybe because I feel unlucky in life or that Allah may be punishing me. During the first few days of Muharram, I tend to feel my most spiritual. However, the usually, this usually dies down completely after the day of Ashura. Is there anything you could suggest I, t I do so that I get the most spiritually out of the first 10 days? Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, I think before I actually answer the question that she's asked, I'd like to pick up on the point that she says, I feel unlucky in life. Mm -hmm. um, there's no such thing as luck. I truly believe that there's no such thing as coincidence. Um, Allah is totally in control. Um, he decides everything and he does only that that is good for us. So this concept of, you know, I'm lucky or I'm unlucky, I think, you know, that, that has to be taken out of the mm. mindset. And it, I think if she realizes that, or he realizes yeah. that Allah is totally in control, um, then the next point where they say Allah may be punishing me, yeah. again, you look at it from a totally different perspective. Because mm. when Allah is in control, Allah only does what is good for you. Yeah. So, um, Do you think that's a reflection of their own internal feeling that yeah. I feel unlucky and Allah is punishing me? So yeah. they're almost like damning themselves, aren't they? Exactly. And feeling that sadness. So exactly. then they and then, portray it to Allah. And then what happens is because you're expecting things to go wrong, then things do go wrong. Right. Because that's what then you yeah. sort of play out. Is that a, do you think that's a level of hopelessness in that? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. And so I think it's important for them to realize that um, why does Allah do what he does? Mm. So, you know, it, it's all about growth. And I think if we start looking at things from a growth perspective, then we see the goodness in it, mm -hmm. even when it seems really awful yeah. or, you know, it feels like it's, it's really difficult. Mm. Because you see the growth in it, it makes it much easier to cope with. And, you know, even when something is done to us, mm. because we know Allah is there and Allah is in control, then we feel like we can cope with this because Allah gives us the tools to cope with it. Yeah. So I think that's really, really important. Definitely. It's a really good point. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then um, they talk about the fact that they feel very um, connected during the first 10 days and that sort of dies down after our shura. And what can they do more? Um, there are certain times in the year which are more blessed, mm -hmm. you know, it has more barakah in it. And obviously during those times, it is much easier to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because during those times we are forgiven our sins, you know, there is more barakah coming down. There is, we ourselves, I think, come out of our normal routine, which yeah. again helps us to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So um, I think it's, it's important to think of a few things here. Um, for example, in the 10 days, what is it that he or she is doing, which is helping her mm. connect to Allah? Um, during those 10 days, actually reflect on where they are, where they want to be, what's stopping them from being where they want to be. Um, what can they change in their lives? Right. Ask for forgiveness. Um, so, if, I mean, just to you know, elaborate on that point, um, do you, would you say that these holy months, um, so Shahar Ramadan, Hajj, um, you know, for um, Shias, obviously, Ashura, uh, Muharram. Do you think these are, are ways that points that um, are intercepted almost like created to give us that connection? It's a blessing for us to be able to have that moment where, you're, like you're saying, you can step out of your normal yeah. routine and Allah is calling you to Him exactly. um, through the um, Ahl Bayt. Yeah. No, no, for sure, because, um, you know, if you think of a ship when it's in water, mm. it moves in the water. But for it to be fixed, it has to come out of the water. Yeah. So it's the same sort of principle for us. It's like we need the world and we need to sort of move in the world. But sometimes we just need to be taken out of our daily routine yeah. just so we can be fixed. Yeah. And, you know, because these God knew that we wouldn't concentrate on our soul and we would concentrate on our physical body because we're in the physical world. Yes. He gives us these moments, these opportunities um, in order to sort of connect to our soul, connect back to him, mm. connect to the Ahl Bayt. Um, in order to sort of realize where we're actually going. It's not about this world. We get so caught up in this world yeah. that we forget that this isn't the it's end. almost this like realigning your compass exactly. to say where the direction is. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly like that. 
So, you know, it's, it's really important for, I think, the sad thing is, I think, nowadays be with the internet, which is an amazing thing, yeah. um, but it can also be quite damning in, like, a lot of people will listen to lectures online. Again, you don't get the whole atmosphere, you mm -hmm. don't get the concept of the Ummah, you don't actually walk into a, you know, into a sort of mosque situation where you're with others, you're grieving with yeah. others, and, you know, all of that is important as and well. And they say where there's, um, even Hadith Kasawa, they say that, you know, there's a, a, a gathering of people yeah. and remembering um, Ahl Bayt that Allah sends his angels there. So, in, in these areas, like you're saying, the, mo the masjid is, is a classic place where yeah. there will be angels. So, perhaps to you know, alleviate our sins, aren't exactly. they? Exactly. So. And also, you know, you have Hadith where Bibi Fatima al Islam says that wherever, um, you know, the Masai of Imam Hussain is yeah. recited, she will be present there. Yeah. So, if, even if you don't get anything from the lecture, yes. You know, there is a chance that your soul will connect to, to the soul of Lady Fatima. Why would you give up on that? Yeah. Now, you know, I think we're so focused on the academic aspect of it, this, you know, that we need to get something from the lecture. So we will look all over and try to find the best lecturer. But sometimes it's just about mm. being there and coming out of the normal routine of our life. And it's like when you're at mosque, it's different to when you're at home. You know, when you're at home, you probably be sitting on your bed, relaxing, maybe sort of half concentrating, half yes. not. There's, there's a huge difference between actually physically yeah. going to the mosque. The effort, isn't it? And yeah. that effort will be rewarded. But I think it's interesting, this, this question, um, and like we were saying, they feel hopeless, but then you think, well, they've managed to get yeah. a spiritual connection, connection which yeah. shows that Allah's door is not closed. Yeah, and that, sure. that, you know, there's people that actually even in Ashura can't make that connection. And you think, well, you know, how, if that was the case, how much you'd possibly feel like that, that maybe Allah is punishing, but the fact they've been able to do it for 10 days and then perhaps go, like you said, what is happening that after the 10 days, they're losing that connection. And and I wanted to ask you really, like, so this is the beginning of Muharram, how, where we are now, what would you say would be where we, we ought to be? Where are we headed towards sort of by the end of this morning period? Where, where should we okay, so look towards? I truly believe that with every, um, opportunity that's been given to us, there is accountability. So, you know, the opportunity of being born a Shia or, or coming into the Shia faith, the opportunity of going to the, the Majalis of Imam Hussain al Islam, um, the opportunity of being with others who are mourning with you, I think those all have accountability. So if you are the same person at the beginning of the 10 days mm. and you're exactly the same person at the end of that 10 days, something's not quite exactly mm. what, how are you going to answer to that opportunity what are you going to say to God what changed so I think there is so is that a conscious change yes, we should make I think what 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 I I think what you need to do is you know when you go to the Majalis actually think to yourself okay again there's nothing random in his universe the fact that he has allowed me to come to this Majalis means that there is something I, I need to learn from it even if it's just one thing so actually concentrate on one thing that you can take away, which then you can practically implement into your life, which can make you a better person, a better Muslim, closer to Allah, hopefully, you know, closer to reaching your potential. And actually consciously think of that rather than just, you know, going there, listening to it and crying and then going back home and nothing sure. changes. Mm. So I think there are, there are, you know... Stages almost, aren't there? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that is the thing. It's like, you know, we have... Um, you know, we, we feel that if we've cried, then we've done it. Yeah. But that is only the first stage of the yeah. grieving for Imam Hussain al-Islam. And that's almost like shedding your weight of sins to get uh, those, those tears and inshallah being a, a, a cause of intercession. But then you've got to move on from yeah, that, haven't for you? Sure. For sure. It, it can't just stop at that no. because it doesn't make sense for no. it to. So, you know, and, and I think she needs to think about, okay, what is it that built that connection? Because like you're saying, the fact that she got that connection, yeah. there are so many people who don't, yeah. who don't feel that connection. So the fact that she's already feeling the connection is amazing. Yeah. So what is it that's giving her that connection? What is she doing that is helping her? You know, maybe she's actually taking more time out in Ibadah. Maybe it's it's the connection with the Ahlul Bayt. Yeah. Maybe, you know, whatever it is, she need, he or she needs to think about what is it and then continue with that. Mm -hmm. What usually happens is we start off at a level and then during these blessed days or months, we sort of move upwards. And then once those days are over, we start coming down. But the idea is, yes, we will come down, but we shouldn't come down to the same level. Sure. We should at least be a little bit higher yeah. than we're, where we started off with. So I think that, you know, you need to have a conscious sort of decision that I'm not going to be the exact same person that I was at the beginning. And the other beautiful thing I think about Muharram is, one, it's 
the beginning of the year. Mm. So you actually start off with your New Year's resolution. Okay, this yeah. is this is what I want to change this year going forward. You know, this is what I didn't do last year. This is where I, you know, maybe wanted to improve on or whatever. And this is the beginning of the new year. This is a new start that God's given me. Let me change these things. And then you use the 10 days to do this thick far to, you know, to make sure that you've done proper toba, you've asked for forgiveness, uh, you've made that connection. And then think about resolutions that you want to take forward and start implementing them. Usually um, we're told that it takes about 40 days for the mm. habit to form. You've got exactly 40 days between mm. the day of Ashura and Arbain. So you've got 40 days in which you can actually, you know, make sure that you're doing these things that you've said you want to do. And inshallah, by our brain then, it will become a habit. It'll be yeah. part and parcel of who you are. And so would you, get, would you be able to give some possible um, sort of ideas to people, sort of suggestions? What kind of things, like small things, yeah, bigger I, things? What that, could, that's the thing. It has to be something small. Yeah. I think, you know, we, we get caught up on the moment and we think, oh, we're going to change this and we're going to change that. And, we, you know, mm. and it doesn't happen. So I think it's really important to realize that it has to be small steps. Mm. Um, and it needs, you need to sort of think about what is it that I need to change? So I think the first thing is to look at wajib and haram. Is there anything wajib that I'm not doing, which I should be doing? Um, so, you know, if, am, I, am I doing all my five salahs? Um, if I'm not, then I need to make sure I'm doing that. Am I wearing hijab? Am I, you know, keeping a beard? Am I doing whatever it is that's wajib on me? Am I doing that? If I'm not, then I need that's the first thing I need to sort out. Um, if there is anything haram that I'm doing, again, I need to make sure that I stop that. Okay. And again, I mean, uh, let me, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt mm -hmm. you, but in, in the terms of doing haram, that could be a barrier to you actually making that connection, couldn't it? So yeah, people shouldn't sure. be disassociating that that's an element that's separate and different. Right. It's actually it part and parcel, well. isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. It, it actually forms veils between you and Allah. Mm. It stops you from growing. It stops you from reaching your potential. So obviously, you know, what people don't realize, I think, or what they do is they think of it from the physical perspective and they think, oh, this doesn't make sense in the physical world. Yeah. So I'm not going to do it. But the wajib and the haram was never about the physical body, because no. I know how to take care of my physical yeah. body. It's about my soul. So the damage it's causing to my soul, I have no idea. Yeah. And as it's damaging my soul, then my soul cannot connect to Allah, cannot connect to the Ahlul Bayt. And the classic example is when you, you know, seeing people who may perhaps eat haram, and yeah. that the heart gets affected and they become hard-hearted. And yeah. that's um, it's quite an unfortunate repercussion, isn't it, result of eating that. So it's, exactly. it's so important. So as a final point, less than a minute or so, what would you say is a lesson people need to learn from this month now that we're in the beginning and what to take forward? Um, I think what's important is actually um, to look at the personalities in the event of Karbala and actually learn a little bit more about them so we can actually use them as role models. Okay. Um, and when I say that I love Imam Hussain, that love has to then be shown through action in that I emulate him. I, I, you know, it's not something that, oh, I just love works. him, but yeah. I'm just going to do whatever I want. That Amazing. love means nothing. Inshallah, we can um, discuss these further in our sure. um, future days. Um, thank you so much for today's input. It's been a beautiful beginning and um, introduction. And inshallah, we'll see you next time. Inshallah. Thank um, you. Up next are Mini Husseinis.